So now that we've established the basic, I would say, unit of the endocrine system, which are hormones, we're now going to be looking at broad ways that the endocrine system allows for communication within the cell, within the body, therefore, within the internal environment that we so uh, very much detailed uh, as we saw in the past couple of flowcharts. Now, we're going to be entitling the next series of flowcharts as intracellular communication. This is going to be the idea that cells have to talk to each other, that cells and thus tissues, thus organs, thus systems, thus the whole organism has different forms of communication via the endocrine system in order for a specific message like a hormone, like a chemical signaling molecule to be sent, to be received, and then to be responded to. Remember, we need a stimulus, we need a detection of that stimulus, and we need a response. All of this is going to be governed by intracellular forms of communication. So there are about six or seven different examples that we can look at, and we'll begin by looking at the idea of endocrine signaling. This is the broadest of all of them, and so we'll start with that one. So this is going to be when things are going to talk to each other via a mechanism known as endocrine signaling. Cells will talk to each other this way. So how does this work? In endocrine signaling, what you have is endocrine cells which are just cells that secrete something. That's what you just want to think of them as endocrine cells. And what do they do? I just told you, they secrete. Endocrine cells secrete hormones. That's our functional unit, that message. So we're secreting a message, a chemical signaling molecule, into the outside of the cell. That would just be called the extracellular fluid. Remember, fluid, why? Aqueous environment. We need to keep everything in an aqueous environment in order to promote entry and exit from the plasma membrane. So endocrine cells secrete those chemical messages into our aqueous extracellular fluid, ECF. Once you have this secretion happening, you have to now hop onto the highway. Hormones then must enter the bloodstream. So the messages, hormones, enter into that highway that connects you to every single part of the body, the bloodstream. Now, remember, you cannot just haphazardly go to whatever part of the body you want to get to. You have to get to a specific part of the body. You have to thus get to a specific cell. So what happens next would be, once you are in the bloodstream, your next job would be to reach and then, of course, bind to that very important target cell. What's one word to describe this reaching and binding to target cell, specifically the receptor? Specific, it's a very specific interaction. Do not forget that. One hormone will bind to its specific target cell and no other. Okay, so we can sort of uh, contextualize this. We can put this in terms of functions. When, when do we actually see this? You see this all the time, I cannot, even elaborate how much this is seen throughout the body, we can just generally state that all of homeostasis is basically governed by endocrine signaling. Um, any sort of response to a stimuli, stimuli response, whenever you're responding to something, that response is usually via an endocrine signaling format, and also growth and development. Whenever the cell is growing or whenever the body is growing and it's developing, it has these messages that are sent to specific parts of the body, let's say growth hormone. Growth hormone is absolutely critical for any sort of growth and development. You have to send it to the places that need it. And that sending of that growth hormone is done via this endocrine model of intracellular communication. Communication between and within cells that we have here. So that's our first way. The next way is sort of a, a, a double one because we usually combine these together. It's called paracrine. So this is separate from endocrine. Paracrine and autocrine signaling. So these are combined even though that they're kind of separate because they follow a bit of the same mechanism. It's just that they uh, have a small distinction in terms of how far they reach. This endocrine signaling can reach way far. It can go expansively throughout the body because it enters the bloodstream. The bloodstream is connected to every single part of the body. It's a huge connective tissue. But paracrine and autocrine signaling is actually a little bit different because this is actually going to be uh, the idea of producing. So paracrine and autocrine signaling produce and secrete. Secrete is our key word here because that's what endocrine system is all about, producing and secreting on um, local regulators. 
local. That's our key here. Do not forget that. Paracrine and autocrine are local forms of signaling. They are secreting local regulators. Again, I told you, regulators are more common in endocrinology than conformers, and we see it one more time. Regulators show up again. So, they follow almost the same mechanism of reaching and binding, just like we said before, but that mechanism is only going to be via a specific sort of route. And what I mean by that is they reach and bind to a target cell just like we saw before here. They reach and bind to target cell, but it's going to be via a very simple mechanism, not hopping onto this expansive bloodstream highway. It's just going to be via diffusion. So when you think diffusion, you have to think that this is because it's local, right? That means the cell is probably nearby and you just simply diffuse into the cell. What you want to write down next to diffusion is that there is no involvement of the blood. There's no bloodstream, no bloodstream highway that we hop onto, and therefore we are staying local with these paracrine and autocrine signals. Okay, No bloodstream, this would definitely mean that this is a local signaling that's being sent out via diffusion. And diffusion has to be local because that's just its definition, it's near cell uh, movement. So, overall, we can just state that both paracrine and autocrine, therefore, and we can context put this into words, they act over short distances, because they have to diffuse, and diffusion happens over short distances, and also diffusion is very quick. So they also act very quickly. So what can you sort of uh, compare this to? This acts over long distances, and because it has to take a while to get to the target cell, which could be, let's say, the hormone is secreted from the brain and has to go all the way down, let's say, to a growing foot, let's say, um, that's going to take some time. It's not going to be as quick. Paracrine and autocrine, much quicker, much shorter distance to travel, and thus, now we can sort of differentiate them because we know that they both have these characteristics. Now I'll separate the idea of paracrine and autocrine by stating that there are two types of these short distance local regulations and they are defined as either paracrine. Para means near. Para means close. So what this simply means is that the target cell is near. Target cell is near the secreting cell. It's not too far away. It's near enough that the secreting cell can simply throw out a hormone or whatever it may be, secrete a hormone, bad term, throw out. They can just secrete a hormone and that hormone can simply move just a little bit and diffuse into the nearby cell that's the target cell. Autocrine signaling, auto means self, okay? So auto means self. This is actually secreting a hormone and you are, you as, let's say, the secreting cell, in this situation, the secreting cell is actually equal to the target cell. It is the target cell. So the secreting cell is the target cell in this situation and therefore what we say about this interaction is that we secrete a local regulator that acts on the same cell. Secrete a local regulator that acts on same cell. What's the difference? This one is a nearby cell. This one is the exact same cell, thus the name autocrine. Both of which, what can you say about both of them? They're both quick and they're both local. They're both short distance travel of a message. A good example of this would be uh, the autocrine signal of prostaglandins. Prostaglandins. So this is a class of autocrine local regulators, um, prostaglandins, there we go, um, that are going to be uh, of 16 different types. We'll just write this down on, on the top as a side note. There's 16 different types. That was very poorly written. Let me rewrite that. 16 different types of prostaglandins, and they are usually found in most mammals. So you and I have prostaglandins because we are mammals, of course. We are no exception to this rule. But what's important about them? Prostaglandins uh, are an incredibly widespread regulator, and they regulate many things like blood pressure, they regulate smooth muscle, so smooth muscle contractions, which are involuntary, so they're the ones that control, basically, or are involved in the control. I shouldn't say they're exclusively in the control. They also are going to regulate inflammation. When you get a cut, you see that that cut starts getting red around it, right? It starts to get raised skin. That's all inflammation that's happening. You're not telling your body to do that. It's doing it on its own. And that regulation, that self-regulation is happening via a prostaglandin autocrine signal that's being sent to that region and that very same cell, and also blood clotting. 
So a couple of different uh, functions, a couple of different regulations that prostaglandins have. This is very much simplifying the way prostaglandins work. They have a very complex mechanism, but just know that they have multifaceted, multifaceted regulation. And remember, prostaglandins act on the very same cell that, it, that they come from. So a cell will secrete a prostaglandin, it will go outside of the cell, and then enter into the cell and create a message of regulation of either blood pressure, smooth muscle inflammation, or blood clotting. You get the idea. And that covers our first look at intracellular communication. We'll finish up the other forms of intracellular communication in the next video.